Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 1999's Stir of Echoes. And before we get started, if you want to follow me or Corey on Twitter, you can follow me at Junior D's. You can follow Corey at Idle Poncho. And I will say that Stir of Echoes uh, was a PayPal request. Like I've said for the past, I don't know, umpteen movies at this point. Um, we're continuing to get through the PayPal requests, and then we'll get through to the requests in the comments. And if you want your movie to jump to the front of the line, you could do the PayPal, at Kiss the Reviews on PayPal, and send us some coins and things. Why not? Uh, but let's get into Stir of Echoes. This film stars Kevin Bacon as Tom Witzke, Catherine Irby as Maggie Witzke, Zachary David Cope as Jake Witzke, Elena Douglas as Lisa, Kevin Dunn as Frank McCarthy, and Connor O'Farrell as Harry. Full disclosure on this movie. Uh, when it got requested, I was like, ooh, stir of echoes. I remember it being good. I remember nothing about it. Uh, I'll, all I remembered was digging in the backyard i remember dirty kevin bacon digging in the backyard and that was really it i mean what else is there to remember <laughs> i mean this is uh this is one movie we don't see as dick so that's cool um <laughs> that's not cool <laughs> that's that's anything but cool right i'm paying i'm paying full price of admission here i want to see some fucking dong hanging bro <laughs> wanna, let's go I want to at least see some like dick root. Like I want to see something. <laughs> like, so uh, we didn't even get a fucking happy trail in this. Yeah, what the nothing, hell? Nothing. But they they showed Catherine Irby's titties all over the place, though. Yes, yes, I they understand did. Understand that. Let me tell you, that was the most jarring part of this movie because I remember her as the little girl from What About Bob, and that sex scene was graphic. Oh my god, that's r I totally forgot she was the the girl from What About Bob. Yeah. Oh wow. That just <clears throat> that just made this a little gross for me. Cool. Thanks yeah, for ruining to, my life. <laughs> welcome to my world, fucker. <laughs> but this movie opens with Jake, Kevin Bacon's son, taking a bath and talking to a dead person or dead people or just the wall, but yeah. it starts off as creepy as hell immediately. Because you get him like, like he's in the bathtub and you hear like the kid. No, okay, I know we said we don't like kids in movies, like especially horror movies. Um, this kid, a really good, and if you could put a really creepy, like if you, you could pull off the creepy kid thing, it ah, it's just it adds so much oh, to the film, hundred percent. And I thought, full disclosure. The movie starts pretty much with that, with like the kid in the bathtub talking, and he keeps looking at the camera. And you don't understand at first, if you've never seen this, what exactly is happening. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, they couldn't find one fucking kid that couldn't look right into the camera? <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> then, I, then I understood. There you go. And then I was okay. So yeah, my immediate prejudice against children in movies got me. And then when I realized what he was doing, I was like, yo, fucking hit that kid over the head with a pipe and sell that fucking house. It's time to go. <laughs> exactly. We get the scene after the bath where Tom argues with Lisa, his wife's sister, about him and Maggie having another baby. And Lisa is a paranormal, psychic believer. She's basically Ooh. Dion Warwick. She's basically a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. this was that's fair who too. does that who does that hey what are you two talking about yeah your wife's pregnant huh, reaction go. <laughs> reaction go huh. like jesus christ first off not your fucking business eliana douglas you need to back <laughs> way the fuck off of my life tom works as a phone lineman still plays in this band apparently but now is like he's having second thoughts about everything because as he puts it he's so ordinary and my life you know my life isn't awesome and th this dude is basically living my life from like i don't know 
15 years ago, like, I'm not going to make it in the band. And like, man, this sucks. Yeah, he's he's starting to have a rough go of it, and it's actually yeah. a good thing, I think, for his family that this ghost came into his life because he was headed for like that kind of like weird affair with like a twenty year old girl <laughs> who you're also gonna knock up. Yes. And then you're just gonna have like a whole list of problems that you do yeah. not want. Yeah, you do not want any of those problems. No, the only good news but... if you do if you did that option would be uh getting away from that creepy ass son of yours talking to ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, because I can't stress this enough. Fuck that kid. But they they then walk across the street to a party, like at their friend's place. No babysitter, but they do bring the baby monitor with them. And I'm going to do a quick don't do that here. Hi, hi parents. Um, if you're going to hang out with your friends, next door neighbors, across the street, down the street, um... Th- this isn't like military grade baby monitor like that shit loses reception after about 30 feet so that whole i'm just gonna clip it to my belt and if i hear him crying that no just hire a babysitter you cheap motherfucker okay there's a neighborhood girl that's you know 12 13 years old that'll come babysit your goddamn kid i've had people that i've been at places with that have had the baby monitor it always ends poorly. It always ends poorly. So don't yeah. do that. What's worse that can happen? Don't, just don't leave your fucking kid alone. I don't understand what yeah. this is. And especially and, a kid that can get up and wander around the house. Exactly. You don't have a baby in a crib, motherfucker. <laughs> this is a little fucking person. Yeah. And by the way, your kid talks <clears throat> to dead people. So <laughs> that baby monitor is going to be going off the fucking chain. With this little kid like, hee hee hee, well, why don't you do it? Quit tickling my feet or whatever the fuck he says. Quit. And apparently, according to you, he's being haunted by the ghost of Michael Jackson. Like, can you tickle his feet? <laughs> I don't know. What the hell's the matter with you? What do ghosts what say to kids? I'm going to tickle your feet. Rex Ryan fucking haunting this house? <laughs> Quentin Tarantino directed it? At this party, Tom challenges Lisa to hypnotize him because they get into that conversation. and. Tom is completely fucked up afterwards. And this whole scene is so incredibly cool. Everything that happens after his horrible, I'm not drunk, Chicago accent attempt. Yeah, his, his, that was rough. His Chicago accent was not awesome. No, you're drunk. I'm not drunk. It comes gonna... in and out more often than fucking Leonardo DiCaprio's did in Gangs of New York. <laughs> yes. Like everybody else's, everybody else does it like a nice subtle Chicago accent for the most part. His is so over the top. And again, it comes in and out the entire fucking movie. But I didn't agree. Every time he got serious, all of a sudden he wasn't from Chicago. Yeah. Hi, hypnotist. Uncle Corey here. Don't do whatever the fuck Ileana Douglas does here. Don't just be like, hey, we're all fucked up. Let's hypnotize each other because it's real. And now I need to prove a point. And then be so blasé over. Like, you basically made him piss his pants, and you're shoving needles through his fucking hands. But hey, I only ordered you to bleed out of one side of it, not the other, so we're good. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm throwing you out of a fucking window. Yeah. First this- off, <clears throat> to people out there who think, like, those guys, like, oh, hypnotism doesn't work, and this doesn't work, and I'm too cool to be this, and vaccines, and da 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 All that shit is going to come back one day and snip you right in your nuts. So quit calling people's bluff because that's what happens right here to Kevin Bacon. Yes. He calls her bluff and then she does the horrible act of actually going, all right, fine, I'll do it. And then bears, again, no responsibility. She opened him up like my booty hole would be on Rikers (laughs) Island. Dude, this is is what... No responsibility. This exactly. This is what I, I did like about it. Like when you think like, oh, hypnotize me. Oh, you can't hypnotize me. And if you do get hypnotized, like if somebody says, Do you want to drink? Like you stand up and cluck like a chicken. Not right. I'm gonna open you up to be attacked by dead people. Like you could take yes. all of that shit and shove it straight up your ass. I'm yeah. I'm done with you. I'm 
divorcing your sister, whatever. Like, we're done. I'm done with your whole family. While having sex with his wife, he has, like, fucked up visions of somebody getting beaten or killed. And he keeps having these visions that whole night, his tooth falling out, seeing the dead girl on the couch, etc. He then sees his creepy son who tells him not to be afraid. He's at the top of the stairs. That's dark and creepy. And FYI, he later finds out that the dead girl is Samantha Kozak, who's a 17 year old that disappeared from their neighborhood six months before they moved there. Yeah. And I have a question for you as far as she is concerned, because everybody, I can try and put it more kindly than they did where they keep calling her slow. Shut up, Lenny. Don't use that word. I don't get that. I didn't see that. No. Any of the times we ever saw her character. Yeah. Like, it it, almost seems like it was just kind of a thing they said to explain or dismiss her being gone. Yeah. But, like, the whole thing, like, it just... Because they say, like, don't they say at some point, and I'm trying to remember that, like, she has the mind of an eight-year-old or something along those lines. Some bullshit Like, like that, yeah. Um. But when they show her, when they do have, when she does have those scenes, she's fine. Like, there's nothing. Yeah, there's you know, no indication whatsoever. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, they said that, and that's what you're thinking. But, like, later in the movie, you're just like, was that a thing? Or did I, did I imagine that, that they said that? Right. <laughs> And I mean, like, I get it. Maybe, you know, like blue collar, little, little south of the, uh, um, uh, uh, or a little north of the poverty level, rather. Maybe you don't have the best education as far as those yeah. things are concerned. And like, she's just like dyslexic or she didn't tie her shoe one day. Yeah. And you now you're like, this whole thing just developed around it where it's like, ah, oh, she's fucking slow. Lisa then tells him that she placed a post-hypnotic suggestion in his head that he would be more open-minded. Well, apparently she didn't say open-minded. She was just like, just open to whatever the fuck dead things want to crawl in your fucking skull. Cool. Exactly. Like He's not going to vote for Barack Obama in a few years. Like <laughs> He's going to like communicate with fucking dead people. The, like, the next night, they go to a high school football game with friends. Debbie Kozak, who they call for to babysit Jake, she yep. overhears him talking to Samantha, her missing slash dead sister, and she freaks out, grabs Jake, and runs off with him into the fucking night. Dude, this is crazy, and if it wasn't for Kevin Bacon's fucking spider sense, <laughs> what was going to happen to this kid? <laughs> I know, right? What was the end game here? Mom, look, this little kid said he was talking to Samantha in this house where I was babysitting. Yeah. Oh, okay. As your mother, that makes perfect fucking sense. Let's just steal this kid until we know where our daughter is. That was the other thing, because Tom senses that Jake's in danger because of red lights and things. And he tracks him down to the train station or whatever. and. Debbie and her mother have Jake and her mother at no point was like, this was a bad idea. Why did you steal this little boy from this? He said he was talking to Samantha. Well, you're crazy. He's crazy. Give them back their fucking child. And officer, yes, place my daughter under arrest for fucking kidnapping. Yeah, if nothing the, else, she needs to go to a hospital for a couple of days. Yeah, the mother was like, yeah, he said he talked to Samantha. So what say it you? Whoa. First of all, again, the chick that disappeared before I moved into my house. Yeah, I don't know. Never seen her. Don't know who she is. Whatever. When they get home, Tom then badgers his son about Samantha and him seeing her and talking to her. Maggie gets pissed and like there's this big fight and the basically the son just ends up just going like mommy doesn't get it and me and daddy are just cool and fuck you mom (laughs) yeah this is is basically it's basically like the first season of this uh last american horror story yes like daddy and i are special you're not 
But what's weird about her Maggie in this is <clears throat> she doesn't want anything to do with it to the point where she's just like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. But she's also just immediately so into what it is. It's yes. just like, oh, it's a ghost. And like, oh, your son can see. Yes, he can. So can my husband. And did the, Like, she's bought in, but she's also trying to not be. And I, well, <clears throat> her character is aggressively frustrating to me. Because it's like, yes. pick a lane, bitch. Well, where the, well that's, that's what I was going to say. This is where her character goes off the rails. Because... Both both her and Tom just just make this right hand turn and they never come back like until the end because Tom becomes obsessed with Samantha. He starts asking anyone and everyone about her disappearance. He's talking to Harry and Frank and their sons, Kurt and Adam. They all immediately dismiss Samantha as like the runaway. And you're just like. Am I reading too deep into this? Because why don't you guys just say you all four of you fucking killed her? Because that's really that's what's that's the vibe I'm getting here. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like everybody all of a sudden can't make eye contact except for the landlord who's like burning daggers into your skull. Yes. It's like, hey, uh, Samantha, Samantha Kozak, she went missing. <laughs> Never fucking heard of her. Like, all right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Tom then has some more creepy visions about Frank and his son, Adam. And he wakes up after the creepy visions and finds Adam on the floor after a gunshot. And he mm -hmm. appears to be dead after an apparent suicide attempt. And I, I like how they did these visions, too. How they yeah. like literally are mirroring each other, but just one thing's a little off here or there. Yep. I really, really like that because it started fucking with you psychologically. Like, okay. Yeah. What is that? Like, is this real or are we in a dream right now? And I like the way, like when Kevin Bacon wakes up after this and he's looking around and everything is exactly the same. He sees yes. the note from his wife and he goes and he looks under the couch for his boot and he's like, please don't be under there. That's real shit. Like if yes. you're going through this, that's the shit you're saying. In real life, like that's real shit. There, you're like, dude, if my shoes under this fucking couch, <laughs> I'm just, I'm running away. Like that's what's happening next. <laughs> yep, yep. But I call those matrix moments because yeah. I know, like, oh, the matrix is real. This shit is happening. That's cool. And then I look up to my matrix overlord, and I just thank them, and I want asked to be kept in the matrix. So. Tell your Matrix overlord to fix this goddamn YouTube algorithm. Help, Have him help us with that. Hey, man, they're just an overlord. They can't fix YouTube algorithms. Jake and Maggie then go on a walk. They come across a funeral, and they meet a policeman named Neil who immediately recognizes Jake's unique talents of seeing and talking to dead people. And he talks to them. And he basically tells Maggie, he invites Tom to their little private gathering of fucked up people who could talk to dead people, I guess. Yeah, and, and this is when it, to me, basically became Shining 2.0 Chicago <laughs> edition. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? You're drunk. I'm not drunk. You even boiled it down to, like, the sage black man with great advice and understanding yes. what the child is going through. Yeah. It's just like, geez. Well, and this, Christ. like, I'm surprised Jake's nickname wasn't Doc. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is really where I'm like, okay, Maggie's, she's gone off the reservation because I'm going to go ahead and do it. Don't do that here. Hi, spouses and husbands and wives and people. Um, if, if your husband or wife is clearly going through some psychological shit where they're seeing dead people and having visions and you meet somebody who is going through the same thing and obviously seems to kind of have their shit together and kind of understand what's going on, you might want to go home and tell them, don't do this, don't keep the shit to yourself and not tell them anything because Tom, her husband, thinks he's going through this shit by himself. 
And his son can like talk to dead people, maybe kind of sort of, but he can't get any information out of him because he's a kid. He's kind of scared of this shit. So he's kind of by himself. How about you go tell Tom, hey, there's a meeting of these motherfuckers over here. Why don't you go talk to these bitches and see if you can get some fucking answers? And he literally tells her here, he's having a vision of this dead person. And it's not going to stop until he answers whatever the fuck this dead bitch is telling him. And then she gets so pissed off at what's good. Why are you digging up the backyard? Why are you doing all this? Why is there all this orange juice? Because this dead bitch is telling me to do this shit. <laughs> like, yeah, that's why I mean, like, she's she's half in and half out. And her not taking, like, the cop, Neil, specifically says to her, Tell Daddy to come by and see me a little later tonight. Might learn a few things. He tells her again when she decides to white woman the shit out of this thing. I said the boy's father. I said tell him to come. Yep. And not only not tell her husband, but show up herself because she's not psychic. But, you know, I'm white and I'm a woman, so I'm here. <laughs> she Let's care- fucking do this. She carries the fuck out of it. <clears throat> Include This is mine now. I'm psychic and have visions now. <laughs> not you, Neil. You can tell me what you know, but you can't tell me to go away because I'm not moving. All of her actions from here on out piss me off and so much time and mental anguish not only for herself but her husband and her child could have been saved by just going home and going hey it's gonna sound fucked up it's a fucked up kind of week though so here we go yep long story short this is neil here's his card we're gonna go here I'm going to drive you tonight to make sure you go. You don't have a vision and crash the car. You and Jake both are going to go to this meeting. You're going to get some clarity on your visions. And we're going to solve this together as a team. And if something seems like I'm in danger, the kid's in danger, we're gone. Yep. Sound good? Good. As predicted, Samantha starts harassing Tom eventually leading to his insomnia. He's digging in the backyard. He's doing all this shit. But she goes to him. You want to talk about some white woman shit? She goes to him after doing all this shit and not telling Tom, keeping it to herself. He's obviously going through some shit. He's literally digging in the backyard because the vision told him to dig because he went back to... Right. Lisa and Lisa tried to fix it and she just made the shit worse um, or better, depending on how you look at it. But so he's in the backyard and he's like, you know why I'm doing this? I have to answer this shit. And she acts like she has no idea what's going on. So when he gets pissed and yells at her, she's like, you've never talked to me like that. And if you do it again, I'm fucking leaving. How long have you guys been together? He's yelled at you one time and you're going to leave. Oh, by the I way, have I have this key. I have this key in my back pocket to answer all your questions, but I'm not going to give it to you. That's it. I was just, I don't have a problem standing up for herself because he goes off the fucking deep end. But again, he's going off the deep end because you are purposefully withholding information from him. Exactly. Until you think it's okay for him to know. What fucking planet am I living on? Especially when Neil specifically says, until this ghost gets what it wants, it's going to grow more and more pissed off. Yes. You come home to find your husband agitated as shit, digging random holes everywhere. And instead of doing anything like trying to help, you get into a fight with him and then peace the fuck out because he's insane. (laughs) Exactly. this Uh, This is called communication, people. Tom obviously starts digging holes in the backyard, eventually tears up the house, trying to appease Samantha. And Maggie gets the call that her grandmother died. And so her and Jake go to attend the grandmother's wake. Tom, while in the basement now, because he's he's moved his search campaign into the basement, and now he's, you know, pickaxing the fucking basement. He knocks down some stone wall 
uh, in the basement and discovers Samantha's decomposed remains wrapped in plastic, her jacket, and he receives a vision after he touches said decomposed body, showing him that before his family moved in, Adam and Kurt lured Samantha into the house to rape her. And when she resisted, they suffocated her, killed her, and hit her body. Hi, murder investigators. Uncle Corey here. If you (laughs) discover a body on your property and you have a vision on who did it, when, why, where, who, all that good shit, call the fucking police. Don't go start giving people a heads up as to what's about to happen. That is the dumbest fucking shit I have ever seen in a movie. I hate when characters do this. Like, hey, man, got to give you a heads up. Some bad shit yeah. went down. Oh, yeah, what happened? Did, 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 did my son break a window at your house? Nah. Raped and murdered the slow girl that ran away. Uh, got to call the cops. I think you know we should call the cops, right? Dude, call them first. Yes. Like This is nuts. Dude, here's, here's an, uh, I'm going to tag your, your PSA here. Because to all you fucking Scooby-Doo sleuths out there, if you discover the said dead body or you discover a dead body that's bleeding on the floor, don't touch anything. Okay? I give them, yes, you could cut the plastic, you could look in, oh my god, that's this bitch's jacket that I've been seeing in my vision. I can kind of look around, kind of stinks in here. Um, Oh, there looks to be a decomposed body of a girl in here. Don't touch anything. And take Corey's advice and call the cops immediately. And then sit in your chair, have a glass of wine while you wait for them to show up. Because everybody will get arrested. Case solved. You win. Everybody's going home happy. But But instead... You have the clusterfuck of an ending <laughs> that we get here. Yes. Which is <clears throat> Tom going to get Frank to bring him to the basement to tell him everything. Frank obviously knows everything. So he breaks down and admits that Adam and Kurt had already told him and Harry. And then Frank pulls out a gun and wants to be alone. So as Tom leaves the basement, he hears a single shot and assumes that Frank committed suicide. Yep. Harry. As we all do. Yeah. Yes. As we all do. And in in about, in about 30 seconds, I'm going to have a question for you. (laughs) Absolutely. And I have the same question, but I'll let you do it. But Harry and Kurt then show up randomly and Harry busts into the house. Even though Tom's like, yeah, dude, I got I got shit going on. Don't worry. He's like, yep, let's get the fuck in the house because I obviously know you found the dead girl in the basement. Cool. Yeah, and- this whole like cat and mouse thing they're doing, like, uh, renovations, huh? Yeah, I had to dig to get under the water main. Water main doesn't go under the house. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? And he brings like a bottle of fireball that he makes his son drink. Like, First of all, who's drinking Fireball, you piece of white trash? Get the fuck out of my house with your shit. But you know, let's get liquored up before father son murder days. <laughs> so, hey, at least they're spending time together. That's true. So, they corner Tom. They intend to kill him, but Maggie comes back home because to to pick Tom up to go back to the funeral whatever, and all hell breaks loose here. When she gets in the house, Harry tries to take her hostage. She drops to the floor. She stabs him in the foot. And then Frank comes out of the basement and shoots Kurt and Harry and kills them both. All right. It was 45 seconds. What the fuck did he shoot at in that basement the second time? (laughs) He shoots the gun the first time to tell Tom to get the fuck out of there. He leaves. Tom leaves, leaving dude in the basement alone. Yeah. Yeah. With Samantha's dead body. Yes. You then hear a gunshot. Yes. Signaling to us as the audience that he has now committed suicide, as he said he was going to. Yes. But then he didn't? 
So what did he shoot at? He's firing his gun up in the air. He's like, oh. Let's see. Have you ever fired your gun up in the air and gone, ah? No, I have not ever fired my gun up in the air and gone, ah. So okay. my theory is he was so angry about his son and the whole thing that he shot the girl again. He shot the, the decomposed corpse again. He was just like, ah, if it wasn't for you, and he and he shoots the girl. That's what I think. I like it. I like or. It. I just came up with one. Oh, okay. Give me yours. My guess is he was getting ready to kill himself and Samantha stopped him. She came out and was like, uh-uh, bitch. <laughs> you ain't done yet. You about to have some work to do. I like yours better. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, it's what I do. It's what I do, I baby. Just, <laughs> but what uh, what the writers forgot to do is uh, explain that one. So I'm glad you. Uh... Yeah, they totally did not care about closing that loophole. <laughs> they all go outside afterwards. Tom notices Samantha's spirit putting on her glasses and her coat and smiling as she walks down the road and disappears into the night and she can rest easy for eternity. And then yep. afterwards, the family packs up the U-Haul and moves out of the house. And as they drive away, Jake is covering his ears in the back seat to drown out all the voices in his head. Okay, two things about this ending. Okay. Yeah. This is a fantastic ending. So mm -hmm. first, they do the non-white people thing here, and they immediately move out of the house after grisly murders and hauntings and all kinds of shit. They didn't do like the white people shit, like, hey, let's stick around after all. They were right. like, yeah, I think I think uh, I think I could break my lease without penalty here. So yeah, we just murdered our landlord. <laughs> Let's bolt. <laughs> so that was the one cool thing. The second cool thing is the voices in that. It's so creepy. Dude, like and how they they get more demonic and then they get more direct towards him. Yes. It's Bro. so great. That like that I, ending is great. After like the shit show that just happened. Like this, yes. the ending was fantastic. I really thought I was going to get upset because uh, Samantha walking away and fading away and everybody's okay now. Uh, kind of ending. I was like, all right, fair enough. Movie's over. Let's go home. And then they show him in the pack in the U-Haul up. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding? This is one of these fucking 13 endings. <laughs> But it wasn't. It led to an even better ending than Samantha walking away, which was the voices. And I mean, dude, like that was phenomenal. Yeah. I wanted now. <clears throat> a, I love this movie. Very good movie. Yes. Um, I remember it as a kid. Scary. Well, as a kid, I don't even like 19, maybe <laughs> close to 20 at that point. You were a I remember it scaring the shit out of me. When I saw it, like it was yeah. creepy as shit. They did a really good job with Samantha as a ghost and not making her hokey, not doing the poltergeisty shit where stuff's just moving around, keeping it focused on Kevin Bacon. Loved it. Bummer. Rewatching it now, I wish they would have focused more on Jake and everything he was going through. And I know I was already yeah. making fun of it as kind of being a. a Kind of like The Shining. Yeah. But that would have been far more interesting to me. And Jake was way creepier than Kevin Bacon ever yes. could have made it in this movie. Yeah. Like that little kid just, was creepy AF. Just the scene when uh, the mom goes to take the bath and he's in there watching yeah. TV and he's trying to get and he's talking to Samantha mm -hmm. like, no, no. And he's trying to change the channel like that. Just that whole scene. The kid was a good actor. Like, yeah, and again, yeah, he did a good I, job. I typically don't like little kid actors in these things because they don't. Oftentimes, they don't do a, a great job. Uh, right. They just don't have the chops yet. They're little. You know what I mean? Um, but he did a fantastic job. the The way that scene is written, the way he performs that scene is awesome. And I, mm. I agree with you. I'd love to see more stuff like that throughout this. Because you only get a couple yes. of like little scenes, little pockets of him. Mm -hmm. um, so if they, 
I think you could have made this because this was what an hour 39, something like that. You could yeah. have made this two hours. It still would have been interesting and mm-hmm. you could have added more of Jake in there. Well, yeah. And this is, <clears throat> this is a good lesson as to why he worked and why other kids don't is because when they were in real world shit, like when the ghost started happening, like when fuck around time stopped, <laughs> he didn't throw a tantrum and run off. Yeah. He didn't disobey. He didn't fucking try to save. The game. He didn't do anything outside of what his character was, which was just a kid. Yeah. He was a little kid that was seeing some shit that he really wasn't old enough to know wasn't awesome or not supposed to see yet. Yes. So it was cool. And, and so many times in these movies, like A Quiet Place or The Purge, these kids act out for no evident reason whatsoever. Yep. And it's just like convenient for the writing to make that happen. So exactly. I love that they didn't use Jake as a scapegoat here and kept him just yep. in his lane. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's that's all I got. I love this movie, man. I, I still love it. The ending's a oh, little yeah. sloppy, but I OK, cool. Oh, yeah. You I know, mean, it's a fucking scary movie. If you're in it for reality, <laughs> you showed up to the wrong place. <laughs> exactly. So but that's Go all I got. Bugs. Okay. <laughs> That's all I got. Do you got anything else? No, sir. All right. Well, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 1999's Stir of Echoes.